All right, so let's take a look at how we would normally advertise inter interfaces into OSPF. We've got two devices here. One of them is called loopbacks, and the other device is called route table. And uh, they're not called that for any particular reason. They were just using another lab, and we're using the same uh, base configuration, which is minimal. If we take a look here at uh, loopbacks, at the interfaces configured, we can see that we have a fast Ethernet interface and then three loopback interfaces. The fast Ethernet is using a 1.1.1.1 IP address, I think that's a slash 24, and then the loopbacks are using uh, your general RFC 1918 spaces. Um, if we take a look at route table, we only have the fast Ethernet 00, 0 interface uh, configured on that 1.1.1 network. So how would we normally identify interfaces in in OSPF or they're going to be operating in OSPF. Well if we start an OSPF process here, we'll just call it process one, we would use the network command. Now again there's been confusion uh, around uh, how this network command actually operates. So if I apply the network command uh, zero, zero, 00 essentially and place it into area 0, what is that command actually doing? Well, we've applied the command. If we take a look at this command here, this show output for show IP OSPF INT brief, we can see that what it actually does is it sweeps through any of the interfaces configured on the device that are in that IP range. Um, and with the network 0.0.0.0, .0 command, I'm essentially identifying or saying any interface that's configured with IP on this device will operate within OSPF. And that's exactly what's happened here. Our fast Ethernet interface and our loopbacks 0 through 3 <laughs> should, uh, are, are now operating in OSPF. And if we had other interfaces configured in it for IPv4 operation, those would have been picked up as well. So let's go back into, and, and actually let's go back into router OSPF 1 uh, and take out that network statement. If I can type, and let's just uh, let's put loopback three in. Um, but rather than do it specifically, let's just say we're going to be using the 10.0.0 network, and our mask is going to be 0 0.255.255.255. Place that in area zero. So the expected output here, when we do the show IP OSPF INT brief command, should be that only loopback three will be operating in OSPF. And our expected output is uh, is there. That's ex what we expected to see. So now let's go ahead and on route table, let's configure the OSPF process as well. And we'll just keep it generic. We'll say any interface configured on this device. And we know that we only have a single interface configured on this device. So fast using that 0, 0 on route table is configured for OSPF operation. Let's see, where did we end up on here? We placed the loopback 3 interface into OSPF. So back on loopbacks, we're going to remove all network commands. So no network 10.0.0.0, 0 0.255, 255, 255 in area 0. OK, so we remove that if we just briefly Uh, validate that there are no interfaces operating in OSPF. Okay, we've confirmed that. Now, an alternative and a more intuitive way of advertising networks into OSPF um, is to actually go to the interface. So let's go to our fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface and apply the command IP OSPF and then we're looking for a process ID, process ID of 1, and then an area, area 0, to keep it simple. And we can see now that uh, we have OSPF configured on on router route table is the name of it. Uh, we have a peering coming across. If we do a show IP OSPF neighbor, excuse me, do show IP OSPF neighbor, we can see that we have that peering is up. If we take a look at the routing table, we only show 
are connected routes, right? All of these are connected. Those guys right there. All show connected. If we go over to route table, we should show the same type of output. Only our connected routes are showing up in the route table. So if we're following the same process of advertising an interface into OSPF in interface configuration mode, we would go to the loopback interface and again apply the IP OSPF process ID and then the area command. So let's do that for loopbacks 0, 1, and 3. Okay, we've picked up uh, our 172, and there's the remainder. So, two ways to identify which interfaces are being advertised into, or, or operating, rather, in OSPF, and then by, by virtue of their operation at OSPF, their prefixes or networks are advertised as well. So, again, the confusion with the network statement is that it's not identifying which networks you want to advertise. Instead, it's identifying which interfaces you want to have operating in OSPF. It's much easier to use the interface command IP OSPF, process ID, and then area. Um, it's a little more intuitive if you were to use that command, um, but both work as long as you understand the operation of what the commands are doing.